in the first one kind of relates to what Giannis said and basically af you know in the in the presser he called out the super teams and he said you know it's easy to join a super team and win he took the hard way and i guess it's i would imagine probably a lot more fulfilling although it's fulfilling regardless you know you're a world champion um, but Vish, did you think that this was unnecessary, called for? Do you agree with it? What are your thoughts on this? I, I, I look, I, I think there's an aspect of it that's cool, right? Giannis failed twice miserably with the Bucks, where he had playoff performances that after being the league MVP, it looked ugly because there were moments where, you know, he can't, he wasn't making free throws. He was struggling to do anything when they weren't able, when he wasn't able to get to the rim. Like it looked like, wow, he's getting totally exposed. So like to, in a sense, I get what he's saying for him to come back this year stronger and win with Milwaukee. Yeah. It's, it's a, it's a tough road. Like it sure it would have been easier for him to go to a new place, but I don't think it always tells the entire story, right? Like, you, like I guess the immediate example everybody immediately goes to with this is LeBron leaving Cleveland. Well, the one thing the Bucks proved to Giannis that the Cleveland Cavaliers never proved to LeBron James was that they were committed to winning. The Bucks did every single thing that a small market team could do to win. Right. They paid Chris Middleton the max. They paid. They traded for and paid Drew Holiday the max. They paid Brooke Lopez a hefty sum of money. They did all of these things for Giannis, right, to show they were committed to winning. LeBron was playing with Larry Hughes, Mo Williams, Delonte West, Ruby Gibson, Ogowskis, Booby Gibson, and Dan Gilbert was never showing LeBron that he was committed to winning, which is why LeBron needed to win and go to an organization that was committed to winning. Now, you could say it's the easy way out, but I do think there is – it is difficult when you're a player as big as LeBron to go establish a new culture and a new way of playing basketball, which he had to do in Miami. I would say Miami is the place that the place that LeBron probably fit a system the most in his career. Like he didn't play the LeBron basketball. If he brings the ball up the floor and decides what the offense is going to do and dictates as much, they did have a lot of people handle the ball and have LeBron play out of the post. If you remember LeBron's post game in Miami was mean. LeBron was really good. So all those things, I, I I guess I understand what Giannis is saying. I don't think it's a hundred percent true. I, I don't think it's a hundred percent fair because teams have also given their athletes the easy way out. Like we talk about super teams and stuff, but super teams were organically built in the NBA. I mean, you look at the Showtime Lakers. Talk about a super team. Like, are you kidding me? Like, you're talking about Magic Johnson, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, two guys who are universally accepted as two of the top five players, not just in NBA in the NBA at the time, of all the time. time. Yeah. Right. And two that are considered widely as the two greatest players in their position. James Worthy. You had Jamal Wilkes, who averaged 20 points a game. You had Bob McAdoo, who was a former MVP. Michael Cooper was a defensive player of the year. Byron Scott. You can go down the list. That's a super team. Then you look at the Bird Celtics with Bird, uh, Mikhail Parrish, Danny Ainge, and, you know, they had Cedric Maxwell, who did win finals MVP the first year when Bird had two finals games with nine points a game. Nobody ever mentions that. That was a super team. The Bad Boy Pistons technically were a super team when you go down their roster with, obviously, Isaiah Dumars, Lambeer, Rick Mahorn, and they got Mark Aguirre, too. That is a super team. That's I mean, Jordan, threat, I'd say maybe I feel like if I you mean, go, the I, fact guess, that they you, had, I think Giannis defines super team as players like teaming deliberately teaming up instead of like, I'd, I'd say like the Pistons were more homegrown than say like those heat teams. Would you disagree sure, with that? Sure. That's fair, but they don't get Mark Aguirre unless Mark Aguirre is tight with Isaiah Thomas, which he was. Which is where, like, there's still an aspect of teaming up, right? Like, Michael Jordan yeah, did recruit. Yeah, Michael Jordan did time. admit on the last dance that he recruited a six-time deep, a six-time All NBA First Team defense, two-time Defensive Player of the Year, two-time All NBA Third Team, two-time All Star basketball player to his team, and Dennis Rodman. So, like, there is an aspect of the recruiting is still existing, and so, like, I I kind of buy Giannis's statement. 
But then at the end of the day, like, Giannis, sure, you took the hard way out, and I agree with that, but you also had a couple of things go right for you to take the hard way and have it work out, right? Like, Kyrie Irving having to get hurt, James Harden having to get hurt. And honestly, like, the Suns put up a good fight. Giannis had a historic finals. I personally doubt if Kawhi Leonard or Anthony Davis don't get injured, whether the Suns win either of those series. If Anthony Davis doesn't get injured, I don't think the Suns beat the Lakers. I definitely don't think they beat the Clippers if Kawhi Leonard is healthy. So, Yeah, I'm with you. And I I understand why I think he said it. Because if you remember prior to signing with Milwaukee and when he did, they people said Giannis will never win a Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. Then they said, you know, he's literally just going here to waste his career. You'll never get it done and all that. So, yeah, I mean, I understand the point, but I think you brought it up, too. And, like, I think one of the reasons maybe people, like, are surprised at this is I feel like this was – people have called it a Mickey Mouse ring or a lesser ring because of the injuries. I I don't know if I'd say that, but, yeah, I felt like generally speaking, like, these, there's been way better teams than this Suns and Bucks team. Just generally speaking, like, mm-hmm. I feel like most of LeBron's teams, bar the last few Cavs teams, were just on a different level almost. And those really? teams and the Warriors, I mean, the 2016 Cavs, the 2015 healthy Cavs. And Do you think so? I think those Warriors teams would have absolutely yeah. wiped the floor with these wait, teams. Wait, I have a question because I agree on the Heat. I agree on the Spurs. I agree definitely on the Warriors. I'm not actually 100% sure – on the Cavs. I think some of those Cavs teams would have. I don't know about the one where they had Kyle Korver on the promo, but when they had Kevin Love, <laughs> no. Kyrie, and LeBron, but yeah, if I, I really do. If you're, but that's also because of how great LeBron was during that period of time. Well, yeah, like if you're, yeah. But but if you're stacking up these rosters head-to-head, like when you go Tucker, Connaughton as your role players, maybe you take JR. You're definitely not taking Shump. You're not taking Darren Williams. You're not taking Derek Williams. I'm just saying the fact that I think those teams would probably have made it. I mean, you saw what LeBron did in the East. Oh, you're saying saying they would beat this Bucs team? Yeah, I'd say they would. Oh, I I agree. I'm not saying they would beat this Bucs team. Yeah, okay, fair enough. My bad, my bad. All I'm saying is, like, I feel like these two teams, when you compare them to, like, other teams that have won this decade, they would be closer to the bottom. Um, and then I guess people's counter to that would say, well, what about Chris Middleton? He's an all-star. What about Drew Holiday? He's an all-star. Well, then I'm starting to think, okay, wh- how do you define a super team then? Because if you have three all-stars, wh- isn't that technically a super team? And I guess you would say, well, it's homegrown and well, they traded for Drew and yeah, it is homegrown, but I guess, how do you define super team is, is my question. Cause last year's Lakers team was not a super team. Contavious Caldwell yeah, right. is the third player. That is yeah. not a super team. Uh, so, yeah, that's where, like, I, I get why he said it. But at what point, because everyone now is saying, well, Chris Middleton needs respect. respect. These guys are all-stars. Giannis, you know, two-time MVP. Well, how do you define super team? Because by those standards, is this Bucks team not a super team? That That's what I would ask. The- because I, I, I wouldn't people say, say it by is. superstars. Yeah, I think people say by superstars. But then, yeah, Jamal brings up the perfect point. The Shaq Kobe Lakers yeah. really had two players. They had two players. It was Shaquille O'Neal and Kobe Bryant. Now, they were two of the three best players in the NBA with Duncan. But the rest of those guys, like, it was not a good top to bottom roster. And veteran role players really make an impact in the playoffs. The Clippers are the perfect example. How much of an impact did Reggie Jackson, Nick Batum, Marcus Morris, these higher level veteran role player plus guys make for that? Massive differences for the Bucks, Pat Connaughton, PJ Tucker, these type guys, Brooke Lopez, they made huge. I mean, Brooke Lopez had 30 points in an all important game five versus the Hawks without Giannis. So those guys made a massive difference. I'm 100 percent with you there. Right. And he had 17 last night. And if we're talking, honestly, if we're talking about super teams, and if you say the Lakers are a super team, then the 2019 Raptors have to be a super team too. Sure. They had one so-called superstar in Kawhi Leonard, but they had like six guys who've made all defensive teams in Siakam and Lowry and Fred Van Vliet. And you go down the list with Ibaka and Marcus Saul. There's so many really good players. So 
I agree. I actually agree with you. And I actually missed that point totally. Like you were, you're a hundred percent right. I, I don't know what a, this, what a super, yeah. This is what I would say. So whether it's two top five or maybe like the Nets where it's like two top five, you could argue. And then Kyrie, who's like a top 15. Cause like, I, I guess I'm starting to realize what, what qualifies as a super team. Like that, that's my question. Cause it doesn't seem like anyone could give you like an de- objective definitive answer. Yeah. And that's where I'm like, you know, you could make the case that this Bucks team was a super team. You, if you have three all-star caliber players and one of them being an MVP, like how could you, like, I could make a strong argument that that's a super yeah. team. So let me ask you this then. I'll say my super teams that I think of my lifetime that can, I can remember. I think the uh, um, Celtics, the 07 Celtics, yep, when they got Pierce, Garnett, Ray Allen, that was a super team. I think the Miami Heat, through the, that run, they were a super team. I do think there's an aspect of me. It's really tough to quantify with the Spurs because they all don't play enough minutes to have their quant- counting stats up. But when Kawhi Leonard developed in 2014 and Tony Parker was still playing pretty good basketball, Tim Duncan was still playing pretty good basketball, I think they were right on the cusp. But I wouldn't say they were like a super team the way the Heat and the Celtics. And then finally the Warriors. The KD Warriors were without a doubt a super team. Those would be the three that I personally would call a super team in in my life. Like those would be the three. I I think it has to be like, it has to be three. Like you can't just have like Kobe and Shaq wouldn't be under that. Uh, Jordan, Jordan Jordan and Pippen is never considered a super team, but both Jordan and Pippen were top 10 players. Like Jordan was the best player and Pippen was a top 10 player in the nineties. So he was like a top seven. He he went, went to the conference finals when Jordan left and in all that. So yeah, I'm with you. That to me is like, what do you quantify as a super team? Because I would, I would agree with you. Heatles, that Celtics team, obviously the KD Warriors. Um, but would you say I wouldn't say the Cavs, the the LeBron Cavs were like Kevin Love was pretty good, but he wasn't like a a few of the years he was pretty good. I think towards the end he fell fell off a little bit, but like I wouldn't say that's a super team, you know. You know, like, uh, did Jen makes a great point. I did want to mention this. Yeah, a super team is definitely not a bad thing. Like, we went through it. I went through a long thing at the beginning about how many super teams there have been in NBA history. But the LeBron Cavs, to me, are one of those teams that people, I think, look back and say they were a super team, mostly because Kyrie Irving was historic in and both finals. Yeah. He was in the 2016 finals and the 2017 finals when they lost in five. Kyrie Irving played, like, insanely good basketball. But... Kyrie Irving at the time was never considered like a top 10 player. Like I personally think Dwayne Wade in 2011 was a better basketball player than Kyrie Irving was throughout the entire time he played with LeBron and the Cavs. And I think Anthony Davis the last two years is just better than Kyrie Irving was at any point he played with LeBron and the Cavs too. That's just my personal opinion about it as individual basketball players. Yeah. It's just like when Kyrie drops 40 twice in a, in that, warrior series in the finals and it's like like you can't do better than this as a second option it, yeah I, I get that but it's hard to, i guess it's hard to quantify what a super team for me is but i understand why he said it um and yeah i mean he, he does have a point like it probably like just in a vacuum like he would probably feel more fulfillment winning the way he did than say kevin durant did by going to the team that he lost to and then winning, which like is kind of insane seeing a top three player leave. Yeah. So that already had the best record in the history of the league in the regular season. But, but then Kevin Durant's argument is imagine when Kevin Durant's 26 years old, if uh, um, suddenly they're playing the Spurs in the championship and instead of him and Russ getting hurt every other year, Tim Duncan gets injured. Or sorry, Tony Parker gets injured, Manu Ginobili gets injured, Kawhi Leonard is not Kawhi Leonard, and it's just Tim Duncan and nobody in a seven-game series. Like I think Kevin Durant would look at it and say, then you look in the East, LeBron gets injured, you know, maybe uh Dwayne Wade gets injured too, you know, Paul George gets injured for the Pacers, and he goes through the finals like that. I'm sure Kevin Durant looks at it and say, I would have won with OKC in that sort of situation as well. And yeah. technically he would have taken the 
hard route to do it. Yeah, tough to say, but long-winded answer, I guess. Um, my definition super team, I'd say like two like top ten players, and then probably another guy would qualify. So that that would make all the teams you kind of mentioned um, as a super team. And then I understand why Giannis said it, and I don't blame him because he was doubted heavily. The whole team was team slandered. Chris Middleton, yeah, Morris, and Giannis, Holiday, Bud, all of them. the whole the whole shebang. They all got yeah, one hundred percent. They deserve a hundred percent of the credit. You're right. What they achieved was phenomenal. I, everything we said, while it's great to have this conversation, it doesn't change the fact that the Milwaukee Bucks are the 2021 NBA champions. Giannis had one of the greatest finals of all time. He had the greatest, in my opinion, uh, uh closing game uh, to a finals. So yeah, 100%. I agree with that. And real quick, Blake, if you don't mind, I did yeah, want to touch on, touch on the conversation that's going on in the comments right now in regards to the KD Warriors. Uh, I, I want to also get your take on this. Like, I don't think that just because you draft a team, it doesn't mean that it isn't a super team. Like the Lakers technically were organically built. They drafted Magic Johnson. They drafted James Worthy. And they only signed Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. That doesn't change the fact that they had three of the 15 best players in the NBA. Like, yeah, sure, sure, the Warriors organically built it, but they also recruited. Like, I, I tweeted about this earlier. Like, everybody gets on Kevin Durant for going to the Warriors, and they call him taking the easy way route. Technically, the Warriors also recruited Kevin Durant. It wasn't just like Kevin Durant called them and said, I want to go to the Warriors. The Warriors technically took that easy way route, quote unquote, by recruiting Kevin Durant. And they don't get criticism for it, which is why I don't think Kevin Durant should really get criticism for it. It kind of mm -hmm. sucks to watch a player of his caliber go to the Warriors. But at the same time, like you can understand why he would end up going there. And I think did Jen is on it. They were ultimately a super team by like without a doubt. I mean, I kind of disagree. Like the goal of a team is to just get the best players you can. And if you're, if you're, you know, Steph Curry or you're Jordan or you're LeBron and you have the chance to get someone of that caliber, like why would you'd be a fool not to call them? Like you would just be a plain idiot. But I think it's more set telling like that KD being viewed as some called him the best, most regarded him as the second or third best going to a team that beat you three when you were up three, one. And leaving, I guess, a team that you were the MVP, you said you wanted to be there and all of that. That's where I think the criticism comes in. Because if you are that level of player, like, you shouldn't, like, go to that type of a team and go to the team that be. You should want to come back for hungry. And maybe that's unrealistic expectations. But I, I wouldn't blame any of the, like, I wouldn't blame Bob Myers for saying, hey, let's get Kevin Durant. Like, why would you not do that? Yeah, but then at the same time, like if a team like that is recruiting Kevin Durant, like how do you? It it goes two ways, right? Like why sense, is it? Uh, yeah. Because technically, like we look at it only from the players, right? We don't really take the organizational perspective into account. We call te like Mark Espinosa has been calling teaming up superstars teaming up is a super team. Well, it takes two to tango to team up. Like Kevin Durant didn't just show up and sign with the Warriors. The Warriors teamed up with Kevin Durant, too. That's why Iguodala, Clay, Steph, and um, Draymond all went to the Hamptons to recruit him. They wanted to team up with him as well. It wasn't just that Kevin Durant went to them and teamed up with them, right? So yeah, why is it only Kevin Durant that gets criticized for going and taking the easy way route? Because technically, if you're going to call it the easy way route, they all went to the e – they all took the easy way route by trying to get Kevin Durant. They had just lost the finals too. I think a lot of people validate him by the fact that they had one before Kevin Durant got there, though. True. That's fair. And that's that's the main argument for why. Because, like, for KD, he hadn't won before, and so it was, like, a big thing getting his first ring. But Steph, Clay, Draymond, and Iggy all had a ring, and they'd made the finals before. Now, would they have been able to beat LeBron, LeBron's Cavs without him? That's – we don't know. But, yeah, I, I think the main reason why is because they had won a ring and they had been there before and they'd been to the finals twice. But I do think it is a fair point, like like Draymond in the parking lot calling Kevin Durant saying, we need you, is like, 
kind of doesn't get talked about at all. And it is Yeah, it's a little incredible. extra. It is pretty incredible that like a team of that caliber was so desperate for KD. And I think it shows how much they feared LeBron and Kyrie in them because no lead is safe, apparently. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, it is it is what it is, to be honest. I didn't want to turn this into like a Kevin Durant, LeBron, staff, that type conversation because those type of conversations can get toxic really fast. There's more. I think the conversation about the super team is really interesting. I personally... Mm-hmm. I'm just I'm somewhat indifferent to it, honestly. Like there are aspects of it that I don't like. At the same time, there's aspects of it. I'm just like, at some point, we can't be hypocrites about it. If we're gonna have a certain opinion about it, we have to have that opinion all the way. It can't just be that we criticize Kevin Durant and everybody else. You know, it's okay what and justify what everybody else did when you know. Mm-hmm. Agreed. 